Once upon a time, we all were English. At least we were ruled by the British king. But when we came across that Atlantic Ocean, things changed. We were living on the very edge of civilization. And when you're living on that edge, you become a lot rougher, a lot tougher, and a lot more self-reliant. The American character had been evolving, it had been developing for almost 150 years. But things really started to change at the end of the French and Indian War. Now you see, to us, that war was fought over the Ohio River Valley. That's land on the other side of the Appalachian Mountains from the colonies. The French lost that war, and they signed everything they owned in North America over to the English king, George III. First thing George III did was sign the Proclamation of 1763. It said to the English colonists, that was us, Y'all can't go over the tops of the Appalachian Mountains. All that land belongs to my new province of Quebec. I'm sorry, Your Majesty, what? What are you doing? We have communities over there. It's where we hunt, it's where we farm, it's where we fish. We have fathers, brothers, sons that just died for that country. What do you think you're doing? The king had started things off on the wrong foot and it was only gonna get worse. The very next thing King George III does is he turns to Parliament and says, you fellas got to find a way to pay for the troops I'm leaving over there in the colonies. Well, Parliament scratches its collective head and comes up with what they think is a jolly good idea. We're going to tax the American colonists. You see, they're not represented in Parliament. We'll never hear a word of complaint. That's win-win for Parliament, lose-lose for the American colonists first thing they're going to tax is sugar. You see, it's not just about making money. It's about control. Parliament is going to control the American colonists. They're going to control their economy. We're not happy about it at all. Then they come up with the Stamp Act. Now, the Stamp Act taxes just about everything the American colonists are going to use in their day-to-day -day lives, from paper to ink to stamps to playing cards, everything. We're pretty hot. This back and forth across the Atlantic has gone about as far as it's going to go. So we tell them, look, there's a thing in English law, it's precedent, no taxation without representation. There is no American representation in Parliament, y'all can't tax us. They say, yes, we can. We say, no, you can't. And we're just not gonna buy any British goods. We'll make our own thank you. And the boycott works. Pretty soon, Parliament rolls back the sugar tax, rolls back the Stamp Act. But the very next year, they come out with the Declaratory Acts. One of those says, we're Parliament, we'll tax who we like, because we say so. But we disagreed. And that boycott remained. Parliament had to think of a way to create a new precedent. And they did. They're going to tax tea. Now what they did was they dropped the price of tea to lower than it had ever been. And they put on a three farthing per pound tax. That's nothing. They figured that nobody in the colonies would mind paying that tax. But they were wrong. We would figured them out. We weren't going to give them that precedent they were looking for. Now, they sent tea over by the shipload. The Dartmouth, the Eleanor, the Beaver, all pulled into Boston Harbor, loaded with tea. In fact, better than 300 crates. The Sons of Liberty, the guys that were most opposed to the king and his actions, said to the royal governor, Mr. Hutchinson, don't unload the tea, we won't pay the tax. The royal governor said, I'm going to unload the tea, and you will pay the tax. They said, don't do it. He said, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna do it tomorrow. That very night, 150 Sons of Liberty, thinly disguised as Mohawk Indians, dumped 342 crates of tea into Boston Harbor, making the tea undrinkable, even for Americans. The Boston Tea Party was the match that lit the fuse to the American Revolution. Join us next time when we're going to talk about the shot heard around the world. For more information, go to freedomfactor.org.